I'd love to. Okay. What is it? So we have a few. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to play some of the videos, what are self-explanatory, and then we'll do stuff on the other side. Okay, cool. Okay, lady, what is this? Hey, I'm testing out the Feather Blue Fruit Scents. Hold on, I'll get the text right up. Which we just released in the store featuring NRFT 2A40, humidity, temperature, barometric pressure, 9 doff microphone, button, neopixel, all these things, all in a Feather format, really easy to use. And we've got Melissa's new web Bluetooth dashboard. I was so inspired by the Arduino dashboard. I'm like, this is such a good idea for debugging um, all your sensors. So you can see here, I got this gigantic rabbit. We gotta make this rabbit a little bit smaller, but it's moving. So this is everything that's going on this board. With the nine off, I've got this light sensor. So if I put this under the light, that spikes up. I've got the accelerometer moving. I've got this little button. When I press the button here, this button clicks. So nice Bluetooth connectivity all over web Bluetooth in Chrome for great wireless Bluetooth sensor technology. Next up, if okay. you um, want like the latest and greatest NXP based feather, we're working on it and we had a cool project that uses Wi-Fi to check our stonks. Okay, take it away stonks. All right, Lady, what is this? Hey, I'm checking out my stonks on this uh, feather wing project I'm building. I'm actually doing this to test out the IMX RT 1011 feather that Arturo sent us. This is a prototype of an upcoming Feather M7. It's a Cortex M7 chip running at 500 megahertz. And the best part is this chip has like tons of flash and RAM, but it's only like $1.25. It's available at DigiKey if you want to pick up some. I uh, hooked it up to an ESP32 airlift feather wing to give it Wi-Fi. And then I added a nice color screen here with some buttons. And it's connected to the internet through this API and getting uh, latest stonks and uh, the closing price and the change over the day. So it's a nice little demo to read uh, this JSON code. And the nice thing is this entire project is only about 80 lines of code. So it's like CircuitPython is so efficient and so easy to code in. Stonks. Stonks. And Arturo immediately decided to try it out as well. And you can see. Yeah, he's got one with built-in Wi-Fi. So it's right. a good test. Um, other things, we got the little uh, PlenBot from Japan. So we got CircuitPython running on that. Here's a preview. Okay, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I'm playing with the Plenbit. This is a really cool little humanoid robot, and I got it working with the Clue. It's neat because you can actually see on the REPL all the servos moving. Hey, little guy. So this was originally designed for the micro bit, but inside it's just got a PCA9685, so I'm just controlling the servos directly. And you can take advantage of all the sensors and, of course, the built-in screen on the Clue. For a little robot so there's a little bit more to do to have it do like actions and motions but i definitely got all the leds and motors we'll say it again will do okay heavy bot now we showed some things that the clue can do but what can the clue do? <laughs> Here's some of the things the clue can do. Okay, well this is me, I'm uh, showing off the plotter. I'm writing up a guide for this. So this is a temperature and pressure plotting. So I've got this little plotter in Arduino. It's nice and fast, and I even improved it. Since then you can see it does this nice scrolling effect. Uh, here I'm testing out the humidity sensor, and um, I found out why it always spikes when you turn on. It's because my hand was behind it. My hand is, you know, hot and humid. Uh, the light sensor in the front. Um, this is a color sensor, so you can see it's detecting the red reflected from the orange in that pen. Uh, proximity, which is great for detecting, again, proximity when the light level can change. And uh, this is a demo of the pulse sensor. So um, because it auto ranges, if you put your hand over the color sensor, it can measure your pulse. The microphone, which you can, if you clap or sing, it'll see the volume. And accelerometer, gyroscope and of course the magnetometer this time i'm triggering the magnetometer with a magnet and that's just some of the things the clue can do okay. um, we also did this morse code project today take it away us what is this hey i'm doing a little test of this clue morse code transmitter let me connect to the other clue over here and then i can use the two buttons to send morse code so let me send h and then the letter I, and that appears over there, and I can pick up this clue, which is also in battery power, 
and let me send O and then I'm going to send K. There you go. So wireless Morse code transmission between two clue boards using Bluetooth. And last up, um, here's some designs that are either going to be released tomorrow or next week, or who knows? Um, this is a Metro M7 IMX RT1011. So this has that 1011 chip in the middle, a low-cost IMX RT. It's a good introductory chip. Wi-Fi, ESP32, USB-C, uh, SWD debugging, power supply, power switch, and boot select, which is something I really need. This, the boot process on these chips is not trivial. Um, so coming soon. The, it's an NAU7802. People have been asking us to stock um, some sort of uh, Wheatstone bridge or strain gauge amplifier. Um, so we'll have this and, of course, Python and Arduino code to go with it. And then uh, an update, you know, so we did the ICM uh, to 2649, which is a, it's a great 6 DOF sensor. The next step up is the ICM 2948, which is a 9 DOF sensor, also some built-in um, automatic uh, orientation calculation capabilities. It's a magnetometer and IMU in one case. And so we're kind of slowly working our way around this chip. It's not an easy chip to use, um, but hopefully we'll have the Arduino code and CircuitPython code for this chip soon. Oh, and uh, one more, I forgot, the uh, two more. This one? The DS? Yeah, one. Oh yeah, I just saw a lot this weekend. Yeah. The DS1841, people like their I2C linear potentiometers. Uh, this is a log potentiometer. It's a single pot, but it's a log style, so it could be really good for some audio projects, scientific projects. And the HT10, this is an ultra low cost temperature and humidity sensor from the same people who buy the DHT22. Back in the vault. Back in the vault with y'all. Vault full. The vault is just chock full. Go ahead.